Okay, uh, welcome back. Um, now that you're encaffeinated, uh, let's get going again. Uh, and Rolf is going to tell us uh, first about uh, Global Coalition for Life Sciences Resources, uh, and then Francis will, will be up next. So let's get started. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to t talk a bit about the so-called Global Coalition for Life Science Data Resources. And before I start um, going into any more details, the first thing we want to change on this Global Coalition for Life Science Data Resources is the name, because <laughs> it's one of these things you can't remember. So any good ideas for a name, come and tell me. <laughs> so what this is all about is that uh, life science data resources are critical for research since research depends on sharing of data through large public access data resources. And this is not really new. This is something which is going on already since a while, but it becomes of, uh, more and more of an issue because uh, as an infrastructure, such resources need long-term funding. However, many resources are unstably funded some resources started again to raise user fees and there we know from uh, history um, that there is only a certain window of opportunity where these resources stay somewhere in a in-between status because they usually start that they ask user fees for the for industrial users but not for other users and after a while, it's for all users, or, or the general users uh, are getting less uh, to see as the others. And after a while, they are sold and uh, go uh, out of uh, use for the public domain completely. So there's always only a window of, of opportunity how you can get them back into the public domain. In general, there's a poor understanding of the data resource ecosystems, uh, particularly at a global level. And, um, um, that is uh, then also a reason why there's very little global coordination often among funders of these resources. There, there are a lot of resources which are internationally and are funded together, but this is then one resource uh, where the funders are concentrating on and they are not necessarily considering the whole ecosystem which is behind that. And of course such a lack of coordination may lead then also to missed opportunities for enhancement of, of such resources. As I said, this is not really a new problem. This problem is, is uh, there since many, many, many years. And Alexia is one reason, uh, the existence of Alexia is um, uh, due to this fact. So why did that come up again as a topic? Well, it was this paper by Phil Bourne, John Lorsch, and Eric Green on sustaining the big data uh, uh, e uh, ecosystem, which sparked quite a bit of debate and, start, um, and got some people talking again. So the, the central point is really, as I said, an old standing problem, how to address the long-term sustainability of core life science resources. And the a small group, mainly from database providers and funders, has worked for the last two years or so developing plan for a collision of funders of life science data resources. Many of you here were involved in various of these stages, but the, the core people who drove a lot of it and were always present were really um, um, Warwick um, Anderson from the Human, science, uh, Human Frontier of Science program, um, Eric Green from NH, NIH NHGRI, Paul Lesko from McGill University, uh, Niklas Blomberg here from Alexia, um, 
myself and very often also um, um, Michael Dunn from the Wellcome Trust and Chuck here uh, did a lot of uh, heavy lifting in writing a lot of uh, uh, documents we, we uh, created. So this, this group, but th there were various workshops where a lot of people um, uh, in, um, participated. So Francis, for example, would talk next, uh, was at some, Stephen, and, and so on. The coalition aims to coordinate and enhance the support for the global set of core data resources, and the coalition aims to ensure the sustainability of core data resources and continued free access of data. The way where, how we want to do that is that we go through uh, the international research organizations uh, group, the heads of international research organizations called HEROES, um, uh, representing most of the large biomedical funders, and they are supportive of this effort to coordinate global uh, provision of data resources. So that's uh, it in a nutshell where we are right now, and that's a great uh, uh, stage to be already in. What happened to get there is, we, after this paper came out from uh, uh, in Nature, there a meeting was set up uh, by Warwick Anderson at the Human Frontier Science Program in Strasbourg to come up with an initial push for a global collision of life science data resources. And quite a few people here in the room were participating uh, in this initial, initial meeting. Uh, there the rough concept of this coalition was developed and then discussed, uh, or in the following it was developed and then discussed at a meeting at the Wellcome Trust in London beginning of June 2017, which was just the day before uh, the heroes were meeting at the Trust. Um, so the concept of this Global Coalition for Life Science Data Resources was then presented to this group and received the go-ahead to start planning. Then we worked on an implementation plan for, uh, describing activities and governance and broad outline that was drafted and refined at a meeting at King's College in London uh, in May, uh, early May this year. And in June, uh, this implementation plan was then presented again to the Heroes Group and received the go-ahead from the funders to establish a coalition and to build a proper business plan uh, to, to move it forward. So the current goal is to establish a global science data resource uh, coalition consisting of as many international biomedical and life science funding bodies as possible, which would provide global coordination and enhancement of up to 100 designated core data resources. Various papers and commentaries were published over the, year, uh, over the last two years at various places to keep um, people a bit informed about that. And we had these various workshops um, uh, where we try to get community engagement. Last year at ISMB, we had some uh, discussion about that here again. And now that we will hopefully get some funding for, for going on, we will enhance, of course, the stakeholder engagement and get much more input. So this is part of, of this, this effort. Um, so th the coalition will focus on core data resources. There are many hundreds of life science data resources, but there's only a, small of, a smaller group of them which are really of fundamental importance to all of life science research. And these are the core resources. Alexia has developed a methodology to, for identifying core data resources that will be, and that we want to adapt for global resources. Uh, at the moment, we have in Alexia 18 named core and data resources in Europe, and there may be up to 30 eventually um, uh, named in, in Europe. Uh, Europe represents about 30% of worldwide life science research spending, and by extrapolation, we come up then there may be up to 100 then of these core uh, resources worldwide. So there's a reasoning behind the magic number 100, yeah? So it's not uh, that we plug that completely out of thin air. Um, and uh, um, Nick, Niklas will later on talk a little bit more in detail about the, select, uh, the criteria for uh, selection of core data resources in Alexia and where we really need to, uh, and where on this we want to build uh, that for the whole world. So what will the coalition then do? It will act as an international coordinating body that will take responsibility for identifying and designating those life science data resources of fundamental importance to the international uh, research community. So to create the core data resources, which will be, of course, a sort of living list. Um, um, it's where there will be always new the resources coming up and there will be always resources uh, who will be not anymore of fundamental importance for the life sciences. The sciences not static, it moves on, and su such a list needs to be uh, then also kept up to date. 
We want to bring a strategic global view to the support of these resources, including studying trends and anticipated future needs for ensuring for, uh, their sustainability. And then comes the really in more interesting part, uh, of course now it, we go to the money matters. We want to explore the possibility of providing a leveraged proportion of funds to each of the designated core resources with primary funding still coming from the existing funders, but they would move to a combination of direct funding, credits of existing funding, and institu institutional support. That uh, will be a really difficult piece to sort out, but it's absolutely necessary, because if we look uh, just in Europe, each country has already very different funding models to deal with certain activities. But if we go now to uh, the Americas and to Asia, way more different means and uh, modalities to fund such activities are existing. And we need to have a system which can accommodate as many of these models as possible so that we can come up with a system uh, where we have a high buy-in, because this will be only successful if we get a high buy-in from many, many countries. We would, of course, also then encourage of the linking of national research strategies and capacity building with international expertise and best practices, and encourage participation by national centers uh, in the development and adaptation of standards for data management. What does that mean in practice? So if one country, country X is a large producer of data, a large consumer of data, a large user of data resources, but is funding very little in there, then it may be not the only way that this country gives a lot of money to the coalition to dash it then out to the other sides, but there may be also then an opportunity for this country to set up their own node in an international research, bioinformatics research infrastructure uh, network and do their own uh, uh, part of uh, core database work in this country. The other, um, um, the other existing sites can help and interact with that and cooperate. So then it's easier to overcome the burden of giving money or sometimes also a problem which a lot of funding agencies are not allowed to spend money outside the country. So instead of giving it outside the country, there is something which will happen there in co uh, context with the others, and it can uh, happen there. So again, a mixture of money flow and capacity building. Um, yeah, and then, of course, we want to work with others who are developing also international research-focused clinical data resources, because at the beginning, we will not focus on anything what has something to do with controlled access data uh, in, in um, humans, uh, which is a wide field. There, there will be touch points. Uh, in, in, of course, in Alexia, for example, one of the, con uh, one of the core data resources is the controlled access uh, database um, EGA, the European Genome Phenome Archive. But in principle, we know that there, there are other uh, political, legal, and ethical uh, considerations to take into account, and we want not to uh, muddy the water with uh, too many uh, additional complications. So the there is a phased implementation strategy. At the moment, we tr try to work with um, uh, um, international research funders in the public sector and charities to, to join this coalition. Um, as I said, the, in HEROES there are already a lot of these uh, funders um, participating and they were very, very enthusiastic about the plan. So we hope we can get as many of them uh, uh, officially joining. And then we want to, uh, we, we will very, very likely get a small seed grant to, um, to finance uh, the, uh, the initial activities, which would mean to identify lo uh, the location, establish a small secretariat, to establish the governance arrangements, to set the criteria for selecting core data resources, to conduct uh, pilot studies deemed of value to the coalition, and finalize a detailed implementation plan. So the 
interesting, the most interesting thing is, of course, for, for my point of view, to, to designate the initial set of core data resources and work to ensure their appropriate support. So that means this mixture of credits, shared funding, and if necessary, direct funding f uh, through the coalition means. And that will be a very, very interesting uh, and important piece of work, as will be, of course, the, uh, the whole um, legal and governance structure. Uh, but this is uh, much less fun because it's so complicated and full of uh, legal um, uh, traps we need to avoid. So the five-year plan, if we look forward when, and you say what's a minimal success we could have in this time, a realistic success and a remarkable success. So the minimal success, what I'm pretty sure that we can achieve, is that we have better coordination and communication among funders. And I think that we have already achieved through this two years. There is much more awareness that we need, uh, again there that something needs to be done. We should be able then to understand the total funding needed for, co uh, for core data resources, because at the moment even that is something, if you don't say that are the core data resources, it's very hard to say how much they cost. Yeah? So even that we have not an uh, international agreement on. So we hope that we can reduce the threats of user fees for core data resources, and we can, uh, and the funders, of course, especially the funders, hope that they can eliminate redundancies and increase synergies. Um, but of course, also for the scientific community, uh, that is served by the databases, by the core resources, it's an important thing to eliminate uh, redundancies and to increase synergies, because we want to give people the biggest bang for the buck. A realistic success would be that we can realize economies of scale among core data resources. We see that uh, happening um, with the limited funding Alexia can give to, uh, to resources, and uh, uh, Christine today gave some examples how you can do a lot even with modest amounts of money to achieve that. Uh, we want to enhance the functioning of core data resources. Um, we want to recruit new funders to participate in the coalition, which is a very, very important thing, because at the moment there are very, a few funding agencies do a hell of a lot financially, and a lot of fun, uh, uh, funding agencies do very little, although their mandate, their, their life science community they serve is often very, very similar. So these imbalances need to be addressed to, to make a, a robust model for the future. A remarkable success would be that we have really a global approach for sustaining core data resources, but we have expanded resources uh, to support for core data resources, and that we have a markedly enhanced ecosystem of core data resources, which uh, work very, very good together globally for the benefit of the whole scientific community and, and uh, mankind at large. So I don't know how I'm doing with time, because that's what is, I'm, Okay, um, I still have two slides on benefits for, uh, of a coalition for life sciences, and one, what is the benefits for the funders, um, but since we hear later on, uh, my esteemed colleague Francis giving his views on the, uh, uh, his funders' view, I will skip these two slides. I think I explained uh, this already quite a bit while I was talking about it. I leave you with a coalition elevator pitch uh, um, so that you can all memorize that and go out there and make this pitch, be my ambassadors. And with that, I stop and happy to give, uh, leave the last five minutes for questions. Thank you. So if this is going to be a truly global alliance, we need Latin America and we need Africa and we need Oceania in, in there. And whilst I appreciate that there, I, I don't know many, I don't know of many data resources that could be classified as core data resources in those regions. I think there's a lot that could be done to engage with those communities and, 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 and um, I think we have the means to do that. So I'm wondering if we could add another line to your remarkable success there and incorporate those continents in, in, in this. Because at the moment that 
there's an underrepresentation of data from those regions, and there's a good reason for that. So if we could use this as an opportunity to engage with funders in those regions, um, I, I think we could do something that's truly global. Yeah, I, I, it's not that I disagree with that. I, but I gave you this example of capacity building, but there, of mm -hmm. course, I was talking about countries which are already already have a seat at the table. Have already um, yeah. moved um, on in the scientific um, development and are creating a lot, but have lagged, are lag, lagging behind in uh, building the research infrastructure and are piggybacking right now on the research infrastructure provided by Europe and the US. But of course, this com uh, capacity building can go also into other areas. But what I think is we should not try to over overwhelm the agenda, what we want to achieve. Yeah. No, I there's think, a, lot, there's uh, a lot that needs to be, to, to be done. I think we, we know that this can, uh, if you try to, this should be really a pretty focused approach. Mm. Um, otherwise, I don't think that we uh, will be successful. But I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm against that. I just mm. don't want to put too much um, points on the table. I mm -hmm. want to have a really focused approach. Yeah. Thank you. Don't be shy. Ah, one more. Okay, good. The fallback is we carry on like now. We, as, as, as the British government always say, we will muddle through. <laughs> Hi, Jenny Larkin, NIH. Um, that was great, and I hope in the spirit of open science, you and the others in the session are sharing your slides. Um, a question on the non-core data resources, right? Because I, I agree completely mm. that, that finding better mm. way to both identify and sustain core data resources is incredibly important. But there are other things that may not qualify as core data resources that are still of international interest and might benefit from some better model of supporting them. Where do you see that fitting in? Yeah, that, that's, that's a very good point. And um, uh, in, again, I can point to the Alexia uh, process. Something not being a core resource doesn't mean it has no value. It only means it has not the same value to so many people, such a fundamental value. Yeah. So if you live somewhere, if you live somewhere on a little island with another hundred people, then the little bridge which goes over to your island is of high value for this community, but it has no value for globally. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, then it's up to the communities to make sure that they get support for their dedicated smaller infrastructure. And there it is also then important that there's a clear idea of, well, if we work in this field and appreciate, it, appreciate that this information, this data, this stocks, whatever, it, it's not only actually data, it can be also other infrastructure. If that's valuable for the community, how much are we as a community willing to put aside from our research funds for dedicated funding for these research infrastructures? And that's, so, so this is a general, this is the problem in general, because, and we just, tr just try to, um, get a crack on the global uh, core resources. It doesn't change, but also this is still a very valid question of uh, what is the part of uh, um, research spent which should go into the boring infrastructure as a whole compared to the newest fancy project. And yeah, <laughs> That's, that's, you will hear more about this type of thoughts uh, from Niklas, 
And that is something which is very, very important, what we need to sort out when we ramp up this, what we learned in the Lexia field for the European databases, and w which, by the way, very often are also collaborations like Uniprot or PDB. Yeah? So, so some, of the, some of the household name, uh, some of the databases you will see on the list of the Lexia core resources are actually the European part of an international collaboration. Yeah? So, so, yes, this is exactly what we need to find and where we need to find some sort of consensus. This is really very important because if we have later on um, a list of 100 databases worldwide and people say, oh, I agree with two, we have a bit of a problem, yeah? <laughs> yeah we, let's say this. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. For the panel discussion, Judy? Um, okay, thanks. Uh, uh, Francis is next.